Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my new Marvel video for all the Fantastic Four Easter eggs in the MCU in Marvel movies so far. There've actually been several. We found out about a couple that are coming through the Disney Plus series that are gonna be airing next year. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing an Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Fantastic Four Easter egg from any MCU movie on the video. So we'll do the top 10. There's also an 11th bonus Easter egg too. So technically there's 11, but we'll start with number 10. Kang the Conqueror from the new Loki series on Disney+. Plus. Most people know Kang the Conqueror as a time travel villain from the Young Avengers comics or from the straight up Avengers comics because that's the way they've been using him most recently. But he actually started out as a Fantastic Four villain called Rama Tut in 1963, a full year before he started fighting the Avengers in their comic book. Kang himself is actually a descendant of Reed Richards from the 30th century, so he's actually biologically related to Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four. Kang's real name is actually Nathaniel Richards. He gave himself the name Kang the Conqueror when he eventually took that mantle. Reed Richards' father, Nathaniel Richards, from the main Marvel 616 universe, had his family with Reed Richards, but he was also a scientist. He also tried to travel the multiverse. Eventually, he successfully traveled to another reality, saved that Earth, and then eventually had another family. Then many generations later, in the 30th century, his descendant was named Nathaniel Richards to honor him. That boy is the one who became King the Conqueror. So not only is Kang the Conqueror a big time travel villain, he's also a big multiverse villain. They're obviously relying a lot on multiverse travel and time travel for the Loki series, so it makes sense that they would try to set up the concept of Kang the Conqueror on that series. We're all thinking about alternate versions of Loki, like Kid Loki or female Loki showing up because it's a multiverse story on that series. Kang the Conqueror is also a character who spends a lot of time interacting with other versions of himself at various points in his timeline. No, I don't think that Owen Wilson is playing Kang. They did just cast Richard E. Grant, who plays great villains in everything that he does, but they didn't say who he's playing either. There will be a lot of multiverse villains showing up on that series because of the Time Variance Authority. So number nine, next big Fantastic Four Easter egg, the Time Variance Authority. They spend a lot of time trying to chase down Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four because they do so much multiverse travel too. Most of the time when you're talking about Fantastic Four in the multiverse, you're either talking about Franklin Richards creating alternate realities, or you're talking about Reed Richards finding the negative zone, or you're talking about the maker who's the evil Reed Richards from another alternate reality. The Time Variance Authority are sort of like the Time Lords of the Marvel Universe, but as you can see in these pictures, Loki seems like he's going to be an agent or forced to help the Time Variance Authority through his series. Number eight is the Minutemen. They're also big Fantastic Four characters that are also part of the Time Variance Authority. They'll probably be chasing down Loki at some point, but they're basically like robots. So imagine if the Time Lords from Doctor Who co-opted the Cybermen and used them to travel the multiverse and chase down villains to try and capture them and lock them up. There's a bunch of Easter eggs in Spider-Man Far From Home most recently. So number seven, there's the construction sign with a one, two, three, four. We can't wait to show you what's coming next. This is one of those cool Easter eggs that references a bunch of different things. It's a Marvel Phase 4 Easter egg because it's Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3, and Phase 4. But you notice that each of the numbers also corresponds to the different colors of the powers of the Fantastic Four. And obviously the 4 is invisible because of the Invisible Woman. Number 6, the location where Spider-Man and MJ are standing on that street corner is just a couple blocks from where the Baxter Building has been in the Marvel comics. And so number five, everyone wondering who the secret buyer is behind the new Avengers Tower. It makes sense that eventually they would want to turn the Avengers Tower because that's moved upstate and obviously now they've blown up that facility so they're going to have to rebuild a new Avengers base when they do a new Avengers movie. But how fitting that they eventually turn the classic Avengers Tower of the MCU into the Baxter Building, replacing what you would consider the giant A symbol with the four symbol once the Fantastic Four team comes together. Because they haven't introduced the actual Fantastic Four characters on screen yet, we don't really know how old they are in present day, the 2023 after Avengers Endgame. We don't know what they're doing, and we don't know when they're actually going to become the family of the Fantastic Four. 
Even though I don't really consider it an Easter egg, you can actually think about Nick Fury's sword space station from the comics. It'd be very easy to do their comic book backstory if you just make them agents of sword scientists working for Nick Fury on that space station and it gets hit by cosmic rays like the Fantastic Four did in the comics and that's how they get their powers. There are actually a couple Fantastic Four references during Avengers Infinity War. Number four, when Doctor Strange is using the Time Stone to look into the future, he's looking into 14,605,000 possibilities. Think about the number four in 605. In Fantastic Four issue 605, it features Reed Richards building a machine that will allow him to see all the possible futures of the Fantastic Four exactly the same way Doctor Strange uses the Time Stone to examine all their possible futures to find one where they can beat Thanos. So it's no coincidence that they pick that number when Doctor Strange was talking about their possible futures. They could have picked any number. They could have said one of a billion possibilities. Number three, the other big Fantastic Four reference is actually in the Guardians of the Galaxy intro scene with the song that they used. So when the Guardians are introduced for the first time, they arrive to the Rubber Band Man by the Spinners. James Gunn gave the Russos a list of songs from the 1970s to keep the Guardians on brand when they were in the movie. The Russos could have picked any one of those songs and any part of any one of those songs because they only use part of the song. They don't play the entire song when they come in. They very carefully selected the lyrics prepare yourself for the rubber band man. The rubber band man is actually the nickname that the thing uses for Reed Richards. So just a sly reference to the Fantastic Four. Number two, there's a big meta Easter egg during Ant-Man and the Wasp. Most people think about the quantum realm being a bit of a Fantastic Four Easter egg because of the negative zone in Reed Richards. But this is actually more of a funny Easter egg. Tim Heidecker from Ant-Man and the Wasp cameoed as the boat tour captain. His scene was whittled way down in the theatrical cut, so he's really just in the background. He's a friend of the director, Peyton Reed. He has a podcast with his co-host, Greg Turkington, who also is involved in a bit of a cameo contest with all of them. As part of that contest, he also paid to have himself cameo in Josh Trank's Fantastic Four back in 2015 is Reed Richards' abusive father. But bringing it back around to Fantastic Four, before Peyton Reed was hired to direct the first Ant-Man movie way, way back, years earlier when he was working at Fox, he was developing his own Fantastic Four movie. We're talking early 2000s, around the time Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire was coming out in theaters. This was way before the Tim Story, Chris Evans Fantastic Four movies. His version of the Fantastic Four movie was going to be set during the 1960s and was not going to be a straight up origin story like all those early OG 2000s X-Men and Spider-Man movies were. Hopefully when Marvel gets around to releasing a new Fantastic Four film, they'll find a clever way to reference Chris Evans' Human Torch and his Captain America character. Speaking of which, next big Fantastic Four Easter egg in the MCU is in Captain America, the first Avenger. The beginning of that movie features a cameo scene with the original Human Torch character. It just shows up in a display. So obviously that's them sort of trying to play on the joke of Chris Evans being the Human Torch in the Fantastic Four movies. The really cool thing about that version of the Human Torch, the original version, is that his comic book stories also featured the very first huge Marvel character crossover story when he and Namor crossed over. Namor's Atlantis also shows up on a map during Iron Man 2 near Wakanda here behind them when Nick Fury is telling Iron Man about the Avengers and how he's not totally fit for duty. Also important distinction, Namor is referred to as the first mutant because he debuted in the comics before any of the other Marvel mutant based characters before the X-Men and before the Fantastic Four characters were created. Way back at Comic-Con, Kevin Feige was actually referring to the Fox Marvel characters collectively as mutants, and that includes the Fantastic Four characters, which might give you some idea for how he's thinking about them inside the MCU. And because of that distinction of the Fantastic Four technically being mutants, number one, there's actually a Fantastic Four reference during the first Iron Man movie. There was a deleted scene version of the Iron Man 1 post credit scene with Nick Fury telling Iron Man about the Avengers when he shows up and he references mutants, X-Men, the Fantastic Four, and Spider-Man years before any of those characters were ever going to enter the MCU, and some still haven't come, like the Fantastic Four. As if gamma accidents, radioactive bug bites, and assorted mutants weren't enough. I have to deal with a spoiled brat who doesn't play well with others and wants to keep all his toys to himself. Right now, John Krasinski is still campaigning to be Reed Richards, so hopefully Marvel makes him an offer if they haven't already. 
Right now, the early rumor is, is that Marvel is going to try and release their new Fantastic Four movie sometime 2022 or 2023. But obviously, because of the virus shutdown and things being delayed, a lot of the timeline could change just a little bit. Things might get pushed down the road. But let me know in the comments if you spotted any big Fantastic Four Easter eggs or references in MCU movies that I didn't mention in the video. Just write them below in the comments. Everyone click here to learn about all the Marvel movies that have been delayed or canceled recently. And click here to learn all about Ahsoka Tano coming to The Mandalorian Season 2. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.